Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and I wanted to get back to you guys about my mystery well water, uh, you know, chemicals. If you haven't seen, there's an earlier video, here's a link to it, where I found this, this white silt that precipitated out of the water when I would boil it, uh, you know, the water that was from this uh, new house that I'm moving into. I was curious as to what that was, I had my hypotheses, but I wanted to, you know, you know, do an additional test to try to figure that out. My hypothesis, and the hypothesis of a lot of people that uh, commented on that video, was that it was some sort of a carbonate, like calcium carbonate, like also known as chalk, which uh, you know comes in the form of dissolved limestone. Uh, the reason that I felt that was its general sort of white powdery sort of appearance, the fact that in my particular area that's not something that's uncommon, and also the fact that it precipitated precipitated out of the water when the water was boiled. That's uh, a characteristic of you know, calcium carbonate that it would do that. I wanted to run a, a further test on it and uh, what that was was a, an acid test where I would take some acid, put it on it, and you would expect an sort of effervescent bubbling reaction uh, if, uh, if it was a, some type of a carbonate. So I ran that test, it did effervesce. I feel reasonably confident that it's some sort of a carbonate. I think most likely calcium carbonate, again, because just because that's very common in the area. I enjoyed uh, everyone's guesses. Most people seem to be thinking, you know, chalk, limestone, calcium carbonate, that kind of thing. They're all sort of the same thing. Um, sort of the same thing or exactly the same thing? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not a chemist. But uh, it, I think my favorite was probably dandruff. <laughs> that was a good one. There are some other good ones in there, too. That one's a, just on the top of my head. I remember that one. But, uh, but yeah, th thank you guys all for your suggestions. Just the fact that so many of you guys who have experience with this felt that that was the case too. That seemed like further sort of crowdsourcing, uh, you know, uh, corroboration of, of my hypothesis. So it makes me feel even more confident because I know, you know, so many of you guys are so smart and I, you know, trust a lot of you guys' opinions. Not everyone's opinion, but uh, most of you guys are just, uh, you know, right on the ball. So uh, so that, that, that was kind of further confirmation I felt in, in my own book. As you can see behind me, I've been doing a lot of work here at the new place, the temporary place that we're moving into while we build our awesome homestead. This place uh, didn't have anything for storing firewood uh, when... Uh, I, I, I don't know what the people did here. They had a, they had a wood stove. It seems as though they stored the, their firewood down in their basement next to the wood stove. Uh, you know, maybe to kind of pre-dry it there. The floor has a lot of mildew stains, and they had some plywood on the otherwise stud walls. It kind of makes me think they were like stacking firewood there, but definitely some moisture issues there. I didn't see anything outside, and they didn't have any way of really covering it. And uh, if you've ever worked with a wood stove, you know that you want to have nice dry wood go into it because it just burns more efficiently, more clean and everything like that. So I've I got this, which is just a Shelter Logic tent, and I, I, it's a green one, and then I covered it up with a white tarp because a lot of the reviews I was seeing on these things were that the Shelter Logic makes a pretty good tent, but the the tarp covering, you know, would break down and get weak uh, with uh, you know UV exposure and everything like that, which you know you think tents are supposed to be out in the sun, but that's a lot of people were having the problem where it would get UV exposure and then you know get brittle and tear through. So what I decided to do is I bought the Shelter Logic tent which was like five or six hundred dollars or so. It was a fairly big investment, inclu including like the delivery charge and everything. Um, but uh, what I added on top was this white tarp to protect it from, you know, the, the UV light. So I, I put the a lot of money into the, the, you know, the tent structure and everything, and to avoid having to replace that very expensive tent covering, I bought a $20 white tarp so that, uh, you know, it would keep some of that UV light off there. It helps to tie it down and everything. So... So that was my approach to that. And now I've got some firewood that's uh, drying out for this year. And it's so important. You get so much more heat energy when you're not having to boil water out of it. It also reduces creosote buildup in your, in your, uh, you know, chimney stack when you're not having, you know, non-dry wood being burned in there. I've been doing a lot of other stuff on this place. I'm going to bring that, uh, you guys in on that. Uh, you know, a lot of work on the pantry, building out the, uh, the storage facilities down there. And one of the key things on all of this is that I don't want to spend a lot of money. Now, I know I spent a decent chunk of change on this tent. That was just sort of... I, I could have just, you know, done a tarp over things, but I know from experience that when you just have stacks of wood outside and they're just on the ground and and you just put a tarp over it, you know, the snow falls on it, the snow melts, the snow freezes, you get ice. It just is really difficult to use. So I did, I did put some money into this solution. But my uh, pantry storage solution, I'll be sharing with you guys on another video, I spent almost no money at all on that. In fact, I'm pre-buying a lot of building materials that I know that I'm going to need for the next house that I'm building. I'm pre-buying a lot of those building materials now and sort of... I, I, 
I kind of coined the term pre-purposing. It's like repurposing, except I'm using them ahead of their actual use. Pre-purposing those materials for creating, uh, uh, you know, shelving and storage stuff. And I'll be sharing that in a, a separate video with you guys. But I spent very little uh, additional money on that. Mostly just buying stuff for the next house and pre-using it here on this house so that I can make this place a little bit more functional. Uh, if you guys are following the Alien Invasion series, we get another episode coming up on this Friday. At the moment, we're just a little bit above the funding threshold, so it looks like I'm going to be able to re release that that second episode out for everybody. But if you want to lock it in, if you want to make sure that you get access to that Alien that alien invasion episode you can always go over to patreon.com and just for as little as a dollar a month you can give yourself guaranteed access to that even if funding drops below the 100 percent th funding threshold and i'm not able to release the second episode of the month on youtube you'll get guaranteed access to that in addition to all the behind the scenes stuff and uh, um, you know all the uh, opportunities to interact with the story you know uh, you know get heads up news and uh, and help to uh, to steer the plot and all that kind of stuff Ooh. Okay, um, so that, that, that's a bit out. So calcium carbonate, I feel good about that. That's a natural, you know, I don't, I don't know if I want to say the word nutrient, but it, it alkalizes the, the water and everything like that. So that's fine. I think that's beneficial. It's good for bathing in and everything. So that's all cool. It's just a little creepy that it was precipitating out like that. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all on Friday with Alien Invasion. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.